Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com, and I wanted to go ahead and make an updated video on options for phase one retention. So there are actually six options. Originally, I had put a video up that said there was four, and then I was like, no, there's more than that. So let's go over each option. Um, and really, you know, it really depends on the case and the patient and what they want and what might be best for this patient. And sometimes one of the options is always no retainer. So let's go over the point of phase one treatment again. The point of phase one treatment is basically twofold. It's called interceptive for a reason. It's not finishing. You're only working, if you're even straightening teeth at all, you're only straightening the front four teeth. These guys, well, that's these guys, top and bottom. That is it, that's it as well as fixing the bite. And by fixing the bite, we're talking about in all different planes of space. We're talking about transverse, how wide teeth are, fitting the upper jaw width-wise with the lower jaw, fitting the lower jaw width-wise with the upper jaw, um, making sure that the arches are wide enough so that we have good eruption lanes so that the teeth can come up. Do we have space for the canines to come up on both sides? So that is the point of the transverse. So we might need expansion, we might not. We might need AP correction or sagittal correction. That is correcting the jaws in an anterior or posterior or a sagittal plane of space. That is your class twos and your class threes, your little small lower jaws, your small upper jaws. Um, usually not big lower jaws because that usually presents later in the late teenage years, like 14, 15, 16 in girls and 17 through 21 in boys. So that's not gonna be a phase one thing. Small upper jaws for class three, small lower jaws for class two. That's your AP or your sagittal. And then we have vertical. That's our other plane of space. You can have um, skeletal vertical issues like faces growing downwards and backwards and getting really long, kind of that Napoleon Dynamite look, really long face, Jay Leno. Um, or you have short faces, you know, square jaws, low angle cases where it's just growing really, really square, like the ramus literally looks like a right angle, you know, or even acute. And um, it, they look like Beavis from, from Beavis and Butthead. Okay, that's literally the best analogy for those of you from the 90s that you can look at. Look it up. Um, we need to fix that. It looks bad. You know, and, and the jaws don't function properly and the bites don't function properly and, and they don't sleep right and they don't breathe right. So we need to fix that, vertical issues. It also could be related to habits, which will later cause further skeletal issues, an anterior open bite, um, over eruption of the incisors, um, a deep bite due to over eruption of incisors. Um, scratch that, anterior open bite, failure of incisors to erupt due to a habit. So there's all kinds of things going on. So that is the point of phase one treatment. So what, let's talk about retention then. So it's gonna depend on what you did, you know? Obviously transverse expansion is really stable as long as you hold it for at least three to four months. So you don't necessarily have to retain the expansion as long as you did hold it full time. Um, growth of a lower jaw is very stable. Again, as long as you hold it and it's not a slide, a CRCO shift. Uh, growth of an upper jaw with like a face mask or something like that is very stable. Shouldn't need to really hold that. Then you won't need a retainer for that. So any of these growth things um, are relatively stable. Uh, fixing uh, if you vertical issues, a little less stable. You might need some retention for that. Now, if you did end up doing the other reason that we do phase one treatment is to align the front teeth once we have created more space. And if we have done transverse expansion, we might want to align the front teeth, or perhaps we have a risk of palatally impacted canines or lower canines being impacted. And maybe we did a two by four or some phase one Invisalign just to kind of consolidate the spaces and make them lined up so that we can free up the roots um, so that the canines can come in easier. In that situation, you probably do want to do some type of retention because sometimes, you know, you, you straighten up these teeth and then they're going to space out again and then they're going to block the canines. So it really depends. You're going to have to take a progress pan around the Gex ray and it really depends on the position of the canines and how close they are to breaking the surface and if they've gotten over the height of contour of the adjacent teeth. Um, if they have it, you're definitely going to need retention. If they have, then you might not need retention. So I really can't tell you if you need one or not. Also, it depends on the parents. I mean, you have to remind the parents that this, the point of phase one, and that they will usually need a phase two later. And 
some parents aren't interested in even having a retainer, um, especially if it is removable. So you might want to talk to them. So if it's not really needed, if it's more like cosmetic in nature, like, yeah, we did do a two by four and we're really not at risk of, of you know, medically of the cans getting impacted anymore because it looks like they're kind of out of the danger zone. They're coming up. Um, we're not worried about the lower incisors spacing out and blocking them anymore. So, you know, worst comes to worst, if you didn't do a retainer, you might maybe just get a tiny bit of crowding that came back down there, but we're going to fix it anyways in phase two in a year or two or three. So do you even want a retainer? A lot of parents are going to say no. So I would talk to the parents. And then there's some parents that are just, you know, how they are. You know, these parents, they're going to freak out if any tooth moves. And in that case, you're definitely going to do a retainer. And if the parents and patients don't wear it, well, it's not on you because you gave them a retainer. So you know the people. So that's that's the situation. So let's go over the options. We already talked about the no retainer. A lot of times retainer is not necessary, but I always like to run that by the parents first. Um, the standard old one that we did way back when was the phase one holly. A phase one holly, I did a little modification on the art here. So because um, I couldn't find one that I could share. It's a standard Holly retainer, usually with Adam's class. You could do a ball class, but I recommend Adam's class on the sixes because you're gonna have a lot in phase one to phase two, you're gonna have a lot of teeth coming in and out in this area. And if you do a ball class, you're either gonna block the eruption of the premolars or it's just gonna stop fitting. So Adam's class on the sixes is pretty secure and it usually doesn't block the eruption of the sevens in the back. Um, but the most important thing is that you're gonna do a two to two labial bow, okay? So not a three to three, but a two to two. Um, you got to keep your eye on it so it's only going over the front four teeth. It's not going behind the canines, which, or the E's, or excuse me, or the C's. So um, make sure that it's made properly and keep your eye on the wire. It should not be blocking the canine eruption. You have to still recall them frequently because you're probably going to have to adjust this plastic, you know, as teeth come in and out, which may affect the retention. And you're going to have to keep your eye on this wire. If at any time that wire starts blocking the eruption of the canine, you got to toss them out. So, you know, and just, just at that point, you know, we get to the no re retainer. There's really nothing that we can do. Um, I mean, unless you decide you're going to do a bonded or something, but probably not necessary. So that's the phase one Holly price point. Maybe, I mean, usually phase one kids are going to want to color it and stuff. So could be around 300 a set ish, 250 to 400 a set. They're gonna want glitter. I usually allow a color and a glitter for free. It's really only like 10 or $15 on my end extra and it makes patients super happy. They get to design their own retainer. If they want all kinds of complicated art, um, stripes, colors, just, you know, logos, stuff like that, it's way more. And then I'm gonna charge an upgrade fee unless, you know, the patient had gone through a lot or something, you know, it kind of depends on your practice and what your profit margins are too. If you're going to really let them go nuts and spend an extra 150 on designing their retainers. But I mean, boy, you're going to get pictures on Instagram of that if you make a cool retainer. So find a lab that does really great artwork. There are a lot out there. Phase one Holly. Okay. But I think nowadays it's because there are other options. You know, you know, the eights and the nines, they think that's cool. They'll wear it. They do have to wear it all the time. But the parents are always worried about compliance, you know, taking it out at school. And you really can't eat with these in. So, um, you know, talk to the parents before you do this. But nothing wrong with this. this I did these on all my patients for dozens of years. Um, let's go to the most common. So I'm going to skip that one. Uh, two to two bonded, upper and lower. Um, you're going to have to put a dot of composite on each one. You can easily do this with a nice um, braided flat braided wire they make some really good stuff out there you want to make sure it's adapted nicely better if you can do it indirectly either at a lab or you know um, make sure it's nice and flat on the tooth if you don't know how to do it i have some videos on doing bonded you can from any ortho lab they can actually make this for you and have it with a jig so you don't have to even worry about it just make sure you ask for the um, pads on each of the teeth and if you do pads on each of the teeth, it's nice if they put a trough in the transfer tray. You might have to ask for that. Sometimes they charge extra for that. But two to two bonded retainer is an option, or you can make it yourself. Um, of course, they can't bite with their front teeth. If it breaks, things move. So I have a ton of content on special paperwork, things you need for a bonded retainer. Remember, again, this is only phase one. It's only going to be on for a year or two. As long as you get past that point of danger with the height of eruption of the canines, it's really just on there for cosmetic. If they break it, they break it. Oh, well, not a big deal. So... Um, Next one would be your Thoreau. I'd say this is a more common one. I just was on a uh, video with Align Technology yesterday and they were specifically talking about the DSP program, which is kind of their, you know, it's for orthodontists. It's kind of like their um, 
almost like their white label program. It's really, it's expensive. You have to do a lot of volume. But anyways, it came up, the whole Thoreau thing. And no, they're not making phase one retainers yet, but they were saying that you could order a Vivera and modify it to be a Thoreau. So, or you can order any type of retainer. But basically a Thoreau is a Vivera or any Essex retainer where you're going to cut out this region, which is the area with the baby teeth or the, with the erupting teeth, and only cover the permanent teeth and the palate. So this will help with the transverse, the sixes, and two by two, and all this is open. So good retainer, you know. Um, definitely could modify it um, in office with a burr, or I think a heat knife is probably the best way to go. Um, there are some labs where you can order a Thoreau Direct. You can look it up, and you don't have to play, do lab work. But that's, I think that's a really great option. It looks nice, it's aesthetic. It's probably price point. I mean, you can get a cheap Essex for $50 from And if you don't know where to get them, I can send you to plenty of labs that can do it, or sets of Essex. You're probably going to need more than one. I like to at least give them two. Um, then you'd have to modify it with a heat knife and finish it with a wheel. Um, so, But I think a Thoreau itself is probably going to be more like 100 150 So it depends on how much lab work you want to do. Another one is a modified lingual or palatal arch. Um, this works well on the lower. It's gonna, so lingual arch normally is like this, but it has these little clasps, almost like that come up around the sides of the twos, the lower laterals. And you can do the same thing on top. Um, top, patients kind of complain because it's ugly, because they're gonna see these little metal bars and people are gonna say, what's that? I mean, it works better on the lower, but it does keep these teeth from spacing out, which is the goal. It doesn't keep these teeth from moving. I mean, it should be adapted to the back of the teeth, so it's pretty hard for them to move. Again, this is phase one. If they move a little, who cares? But I do like this. If people want a, a permanent option, I almost prefer this on the lower than this because it's not going to fall off. I mean, this thing is like indestructible. Um, and you could always do the Thoreau on top. I kind of like the idea of this on the bottom and this on top would probably be my favorite combination but it depends on the patient. And then going back to eruptive guidance preformed position art, these are actually great. Um, the problem is the only, the best company for this is called Healthy Start. And I hesitate to even mention their name because I've been sued by them in the past. So I have to be careful, although this is, I don't really like to throw business their way either <laughs> for that reason. But in order to, if you are already certified, great. If you're able to order the G, here's the problem. They don't let you order the G without ordering the full treatment plan and set, which is last I checked was like seven hundred to a thousand dollars. Now sometimes they do. Sometimes you can be on, be on their good side. I mean, I have worked in their team before. It is a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous retainer for after phase one. It is. It, it's what I put my daughter in. <laughs> so, I mean, like, if you can order it, only that, without paying $800, fabulous. I mean, you know this thing costs 10 bucks to make. I don't know how much, actually, I do know how much it costs to make. But it's, it's you know, it's it's preformed. It's not custom. So it's really, really cheap to make. They have all different sizes. You have to measure with a ruler. You can stock it in your office. Boom, all they have to do it is wear it at night and at home. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. And also, is rubbery. So you can check out my... Um, eruptive guidance appliances. There's another one called U Concept. They don't have the tooth sockets as much. So, I mean, that's proprietary. That's why they cannot, but it's better than nothing. So, you could use a U Concept U trainer. It's probably not going to be as good. Now, there are ways to modify it, and I know how to modify them. Um, so, you could probably modify your U Concept, but I'm not going to get into that because I don't want to get myself in trouble. Um, but uh, yeah. You know, if, if you're creative, you could easily modify a U concept. U concept is a way cheaper version. You don't have to take an expensive course in order to get certified. You don't have to order the whole package. You can order it from Great Lakes Orthodontics. Um, Seven Seas is the brand. I have a ton of concept on U, co ton of content on U concept in my YouTube channel. You can check it out. But this is probably my favorite, and you don't have to wear it at school. But um, I'm not sure if you're able to order it a la carte, single, piecemeal. Certainly don't mention my name if you guys contact them because I don't want to deal with them. But um, yeah, I mean, if you're already certified, great. That's what I would do. If you, if you could find a way to get it not for $800 to $1,000. If you could get it for under $150, $200, I think it's worth it because it's an upper and lower appliance in one. And it'll help the other teeth come in straight. So it's a win-win. All right, that's pretty much it. Those are your options for phase one retention. I think I'm definitely going to make a little handout. Um, 
to go along with that. Hopefully that's helpful. All right, thanks.